Okay, uh, thank you, Anda. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, buenas tardes. So, um, as Anda has uh, introduced, uh, that this paper is uh, discussing about, uh, we are trying to get the benefit of um, uh, marine protected areas in combating, in, in reducing inequalities and at the same time fostering uh, environmental sustainability in Indonesia. This is actually a group of six researchers in uh, Institute from, for Economic and Social Research, an institution based under the Faculty of Economics and Business, University of Indonesia. So, uh, just to get uh, as a scoping paper, oh, it goes to the right. Okay, uh, this is a scoping paper uh, in which uh, just to get our expectation on the same uh, page, uh, we are trying to find uh, to review the, the overall the the, the major mechanism uh, transmit uh, me mechanism mechanism transmit transmission mechanism channels on how <laughs> on how MPA would uh, would uh, reduce inequalities by at the same time um, promoting sustainable environment. Uh, we do it by showcasing uh, the current condition of inequalities in Indonesia. Uh, we, prov we showcase the heterogeneity of inequalities, uh, mainly based on coastal and non-coastal areas, and at the same time, MPAs and non-MPAs areas. And we also uh, describe about the current condition, current situation of MPAs in Indonesia, and how the government would react on uh, that uh, on that uh, situation and how did it go and uh, as a result uh, this scoping paper is trying to 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 identify what could be improved for the for the next uh, agenda um, right yeah thanks to IFD uh, last year, uh, we managed to narrow down uh, some issues in uh, climate change up to MPA. So we, how we select over uh, many issues uh, in the climate change, we narrow down to MPAs. But, uh, we we did it uh, after consult after initiating consultations with uh, six ministries, and we identified 28 policies. Uh, consisting of uh, energy, transport, fiscal, marine, social protections, and 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 some other areas that might uh, uh, might cover the climate change, and through discussions with uh, AFD team, uh, we decided that MPA might be the one because it it has uh, clear transmission to both climate change and also inequalities. Uh, and potentially for the next work, we could have a high and measurable impact of climate change to inequality. And as I will uh, later uh, explain, Indonesia is a vast arch archipelagic country uh, where marine sector is uh, plays the uh, one of the most uh, strategic sector in economy. Uh, how we scope the how we scope the topic in this paper? Uh, we basically uh, do uh, qualitative work. We review the regulation, implementation report, and literature literature review. We also make use of sec some secondary data analysis from the national statistics, statistics agencies. And for uh, for the takeaways later, we did workshops and uh, FGDs with academician practitioners, local and central government, mainly the stakeholder of MPIs and inequalities in Indonesia. Uh, since, right, this doesn't seem work. Since uh, I think to many of you Indonesia is like uh, on the other side of the world, I think it, it's worth for me to, ex to briefly explain the profile, economic profile of Indonesia. Uh, located in Southeast Asia, it's a uh, big countries from end to end. It's, also, it's almost as big as the United States. But mainly, uh, the area is, is water, not like the United States, which mainly are covered uh, by land and soil. In our country, most of those are water, sea. Uh, it comprises of 17,000 islands. Yes, it's 1,000, not 100. Uh, 
and the GDP is over uh, slightly over one million. Uh, I th yeah, one million. There's a typo, I guess, Andika. <laughs> yeah, uh, we ranked the 16th uh, uh, in the world, but since our people is over uh, a quarter billion, uh, that brings down the GDP per capita uh, to, f to only 4,200 uh, US dollars, which is like uh, it ranked uh, 127th in the world. So about the poverty and, and inequality uh, figure, we, yeah. uh, the poverty rate uh, based on the national poverty line is uh, below 10, uh, thankfully. And the Gini, co Gini coefficient is uh, around uh, 0 0.384. Uh, if you see uh, the map of Indonesia, we, we show the poverty level here. Uh, as we go far to the west, to the east, the poverty level increases. Uh, the capital city is somewhere here, so uh, we still have inequalities issues across the region. Uh, we see uh, a positive correlation between Gini coefficient and poverty rate, uh, although we haven't have yet to check whether there is a causal effect between the, the two indicators. And why? Uh, uh, does inequality matters in, in Indonesia? Uh, I might take you uh, back to one and a half decade ago. Uh, back in uh, 2005, 2000, 2008, uh, there was com commodity boom in Indonesia uh, where we quite rely on commodities in our economy. Uh, that brings up the rich getting richer, but not so much for the poorer. That's why the Gini coefficient increases uh, quite significantly during this period. But uh, the government made a good progress over the uh, 2010 up to uh, 2016 there. There are some, some, some programs where they uh, provide cash, assi cash assistance to, to people in the, in the bottom four. Uh, and then uh, obviously the COVID uh, hit. Indonesia uh, back in 2020, uh, it it pushed up a little bit from 0.381 to 384, but thankfully it, it didn't go uh, that much because the government anticipated uh, using uh, some cash assistance, for example. And why we <coughs> focus on MPA? Again, this is an arch archipelagic country, and since many people uh, are fisheries, uh, over 16% of the population relies on, on the uh, fishery sectors. And why we think it is important, because uh, people who, who, who are in the fishery sectors has uh, lower expenditure than uh, other uh, pe people in other sectors. That's why we, we, we anticipate uh, uh, inequalities there. So yeah, uh, again we stock up, uh, we stock taking some uh, me uh, transmission mechanism. I think I will uh, go a bit far, uh, a, a bit uh, quickly here because we all know that uh, there might be uh, there are three branches of uh, channels that we might expect from <coughs> from uh, MPAs to inequalities, uh, not only from economic equalities but also from uh, access and governments and also the health and environment benefits. The later two will be like, a, uh, we, you might say it's an indirect effect from uh, MPAs to inequalities. Uh, there are some, some research has been done uh, about this, uh, about this uh, transmission, me transmission mechanism. Uh, and uh, I mean, um, this is the, the, the foundation that we will use for the further research. <coughs> okay, uh, about the MPAs, uh, what, uh, what that? Uh, what is the related policies that the government has uh, been done? Uh, well, they target uh, 32.5 million hectares uh, uh, of of our ocean as an MPA, uh, which accounts not not so much 10% uh, of the territory. Uh, but uh, up until 2021, uh, over 60% uh, of it. Uh, has been considered as an, as an MPA. And they put the MPA as one of the roadmaps uh, 
uh, that they will try to achieve by 2030. And <coughs> Uh, they do have evaluation and verification of MPA. Uh, they categorize as gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, the, the interesting thing is of uh, 410 MPAs that has been evaluated. Sorry, uh, only 61 has been have been evaluated, and none of them uh, came into uh, the gold, the best uh, categories. Uh, many of those came down to only bronze. Uh, categories. <coughs> they also rule down uh, how to finance the MPA. They they uh, allocate. Uh, we call it specific special allocation funds, which is like a, uh, the government put uh, s uh, some allocation to the local government, uh, where the local government can use it for um, physical development in their areas. And also, they initiated uh, some grants uh, from the community movement, which is called Compact here. And not only that, they also uh, develop monitoring partnership with one institution in Australia. Uh, so this is the uh, the map of the MPAs across Indonesia. It's, it's scattered around from the west to the east. Uh, so we see a good figure here. And how did it go? Uh, we tried to analyze it based on macro and micro level. Uh, in the macro level, uh, as we said, uh, it's not so much, only 10%. They aim only 10%, but they did a good, um, a good progress. So yeah, we, we may say that uh, it aimed low, but shoot high. Uh, debatable, probably, but, uh, but yeah, uh, they, good, they did a good, good progress. But the thing is, we don't really have a good benchmark for, for, for this, because uh, I don't really think we have any other countries uh, that big and have uh, the same amount of islands. Uh, the closest that we might end up with uh, is Philippines, Japan, and Australia, which are uh, slightly a bit different um, uh, geographically. And again, to conduct the uh, the uh, the causal inference probably and for deeper uh, empirical analysis we are lack of data as well as the documentation to for monitoring the uh, each mpas imagine we have like hundreds of mpas they don't really have a good documentation of how it how each each mpas go while for the micro level um uh generally we don't really they the government uh, mainly just developed the MPAs, but not really uh, maintaining the MPAs itself. Uh, so they just develop it, and then it's that's it. Uh, it's not sustainable. The sustainable. That's that's the main problem of uh, the MPAs in Indonesia, uh, and also as well as the human resources. Yeah, uh, we know that. Uh, I mean, uh, we need capacity building on the human resources. And from the uh, secondary data, we, we, we make use the, uh, the data from the National Statistics, Statistics Agency. We try to identify which areas are on district level. We try to identify uh, which areas are coastal and non-coastal areas, and which areas uh, has MPAs, and which area doesn't have MPAs. Uh, <coughs> this is more like a descriptive uh, statistics, not uh, causal inference. But we do find a significant, uh, the t-test shows that uh, there is a significant difference between uh, the Gini coefficient between co uh, non-coastal areas and coastal areas in which uh, coastal areas has lower Gini coefficient. And to be more specific, coastal area with MPA has, has a lower Gini coefficient than coastal area without MPA. This is using the data uh, back in 2021, but if we see we see consistent uh, figure uh, from 2015 up to 2021, uh, where the coastal area with MPAs shows uh, consistently lower Gini coefficient than uh, coastal area without uh, MPAs, <coughs> and the t-test shows a significant difference between the two. Um, maybe I should. Uh, and the uh, and the key takeaways from what we have here 
we again divide it in, on, in policy perspective and what we can do for the next research. For the policy perspective, obviously, uh, incentive is important for, for any program to, to carry it on. And uh, from the FGDs and the workshop, uh, we found that uh, management system, management, co management system is important. So it's not only the task for the government, but also for the people in the MPAs and also uh, other, other stakeholders in the, uh, in the MPAs, uh, which should develop a strong collaboration and monitoring and also improving the uh, uh, institutional capacity, not only the institution, but also the, the human resource. And what we expect from IFD, obviously, uh, the inequality diagnostic research might provide us with a better data, with a more detailed data, so we can conduct uh, a more causal evidence uh, between the MPAs and the inequality. So this is the, the key takeaways that we might identify from our work. So terima kasih, muchas gracias, and uh, thank you very much for your attention.